started. So welcome tonight to Tackle Your Transfer. It's a K-State Global Campus webinar. I'm Jennifer Fort Miller, and I am joined here with my co-workers and colleagues, Sarah Kells, who is an admissions representative for K-State Global Campus. And also joining us is Roxanne Kennedy, or Roxy. She is also with us as an admissions representative, and we will be presenting tonight's information and answering questions about transferring to Kansas State University online and all of our various online programs. So that kind of gives you a background of who we are. For the next 30 to 45 minutes, we will be giving a presentation uh, about all the, the things related to transfer. We'll allow about 10 to 15 minutes for questions. If at any point during the presentation you have a question, then please go down to the bottom where you will see the Q&A box. And if you could enter your question at that point, that would be great. You can have your name included or you could use it as an anonymous question and we'll be sure to answer them. We may be able to answer them right then and there and you'll see the answer posted or we may say that we want to answer this later live and so we can talk through that particular answer. So be sure to put questions in there at any point in time um, that's on your mind. If you have some now, if you have some later, uh, yeah, be sure to just put them in there and we'll get them answered. So um, in terms of orientation, this is probably not your first webinar, but we do have that Q&A section down there if you would like to um, put your answers there. I think there's some other things. If you want to raise your hand, you can. Um, we would certainly be interactive with you as we can, but it is a fairly large group here, so we will um, use the Q&A primarily. We do have some whole questions that we're going to answer um, here. We'll launch them before too long and get a feel for where you're from, what you're interested in, and that'll give us a little bit of background to see who all is in our audience tonight. And I wanted to let you know this will be recorded. Um, it is going to be posted, be, should be available to be posted and emailed to you in about seven to 10 business days. So we are recording it and we will have that available for you at a later, later date in case we go through the information fast and you have other things you want to go back to review. So this is the list of topics. We have a lot to talk about tonight as being a transfer student, who they are, why you want to come to K-State, um, how to go about the application process and how to apply to K-State, and then all about transfer credit, how we evaluate it, how we can utilize credit by exam, um, prior learning credit. We're going to hit on all these topics, including military credit and international credit. We're also going to go through some of the admissions and enrollment, what you can expect after you get admitted to K-State, and then talk about some of the other neat things that are available to transfer students like direct link or dual advising program and reverse transfer. We have a lot of services that are available and we'll talk at the end the important dates for this upcoming semester um, that you'd be applying for. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about in a nutshell. We'll divvy those slides out here in a little bit so that you can learn more about it. But now it's time for a poll. So if you don't mind, um, where are you transferring from? So are you from the state of Kansas? Are you from outside of the state of Kansas? Or are you outside of the United States? So if you don't mind filling that out, we'll take a quick look to see where everybody is from tonight. It looks like we've got a nice nice mix from in, in the state of Kansas and also from outside, outside of the state of Kansas. All right, well, we will keep moving on then. Thank you for answering that question. So who are transfer students? Um, transfer students are anybody that's completed 24 credit hours or more. Um, they come from a variety of other institutions and they transfer for a variety of reasons. It could be that you're looking for a specific program and one institution didn't have it, so you need to come to a different institution or location, maybe you moved. Um, a lot of different reasons why we have transfer students. So we want to address some of those issues that come up with being a transfer student, how to get all that credit to come over as seamlessly and efficiently as possible. And we do know that darn near 90% of all of our online students at K-State Global Campus are do have transfer credit. So we fully appreciate um, the transfer student and on top of that, we're having this webinar this week because it is the National Transfer Student Week. So this is one of the activities that we're doing to celebrate transfer students, um, along with all the other institutions in the United States, that we know the importance of transfer students. We know that there's um, things and questions that they have. So we're putting on this webinar so we can hopefully address 
some of those questions, but we are here to celebrate transfer students from whatever institution you come to. We're excited that you're looking at K-State. Okay, time for another poll. How many previous institutions have you attended? We'll put this one out there just to kind of see. The national average is about three and a half institutions. Um, a transfer student would bring in roughly three to four different uh, transcripts from various institutions on average. And so kind of wanted to see where you guys fall. And it looks like here we're, um, we kind of have a nice bell-shaped curve too, seems to be the average. Um, and that's that's kind of what we expected. It is not unusual to have somebody that would transfer in up to 14 different transcripts because for a lot of reasons, they could be transferring to a lot of different institutions um, just based on location or time or where they're at. So it's neat to see where you guys fall into this whole mix. So yep, one, two, and three seems to be the common answer. So great, great to know. At K-State Online, we think that we have some really neat programs that can benefit transfer students from all over. We've got 21 unique online programs. Some of them are very niche and a very specialty type program. Um, we will go through those here in a little bit as well. Um, being an online student definitely allows flexibility in the schedule. So we know that the online programs make it more convenient for some people, particularly those that are working, have families, have a lot of responsibilities that you can still pursue a K-State degree. It can be in the online format and have a little more flexibility with your schedule. And then we can learn on the go, wherever you're at. If you're sitting in a ball game, if you're sitting in in your car, during, I mean, parked in your car, I, I guess I could say, um, any place where you're safe to be learning, but you have um, mobile course access all the time. So we're excited that you're here and, and wanting to learn more about K-State Online. We're gonna quickly run through the programs here, Animal Science is one of our online programs. It's um, been available in the distance format for a long time, but really unique options to, to get a, a degree, a bachelor's degree in animal science and industry. Um, applied business and technology is neat that it can utilize credits from a lot of different ever, other technical type programs. So again, another very unique program. Um, aviation management, we do have a college of aviation. And so they're able to offer a management aviation management bachelor's degree. Business administration is always a popular option and we do have four different areas of emphasis that you could be in, business analytics, um, human resource management, marketing and operations and supply chain management. Um, going down dietetics is another very popular online degree because there's not many programs in the United States that have an online dietetics program that gets you ready for the credentialing of to become a registered dietitian nutritionist. Digital innovation in media. We all know things are going digital and there's a lot of innovation out there. So this is a great, great online program for somebody with interest in those areas. Early childhood education for those that are looking to work with children, um, kindergarten age and younger pre-K type areas. Um, this is a good one to get your teaching um, licensure for early childhood education. And educational studies, say you like to be an educator thought you wanted to be an educator and then find out that you didn't want the teaching aspect of it in a classroom, but there's a lot of allied industries that are related to education that would certainly utilize this major. And speaking of other education, elementary ed, having that as an online program has been really convenient and been flexible for people that are looking to become teachers and we need a lot of teachers. Food science and industry is also a very niche program, not many of them in the United States and certainly not in the online format. So a really good program as well to consider. Human development, family sciences. If you're interested in working with people from all ages, young to gerontology, this is the, the program for you. Integrated computer science. Again, having a computer background and, and how it integrates with all the digital type aspects of the world. This is a really neat program as well to bring in some of those interest areas. Kinesiology, curious how the human body functions. And the form sets you up well for a lot of postgraduate type programs as well. Machine learning and autonomous systems, another fun program that's um, kind of cutting edge and, and having a lot of, lot of uh, twists and turns as well. So good program there. An open option. Hey, if you don't know exactly what you want to major in, but you want to get started doing something and taking the classes, open options gives you that, that ability to take courses in a lot of different areas and utilize credit in that regard. 
organizational management, again, trying to um, keep businesses and organizations and manage all the activities that go on in there and, and to do operations in that regard. Nutrition and health is another great program. If you're interested in helping people with their nutrition that maybe not, don't want to be a dietitian, perhaps this is the one, the pathway that you could go on as well. Um, see another repeat organizational management, personal financial planning. This is mixing the business side with the people side and you can help people manage all their finances. So another great option. And then professional aviation. This again, because we have an aviation college, we do have this particular degree that can be done in the online format. And the last one then would be social science. If you have interest in any type of sociology, psychologies, histories, anthropologies, a lot of different areas of social sciences, this would be a great program that's very broad and allows you to study a lot of different areas. So great on K-State online courses that are available for you. So we're going to ask you now, is there any of these degrees that you're interested in? And if you don't mind, you can type in your answer here and um, we'll kind of get a feel for what degree might have caught your attention or maybe you already have one that you're thinking about. So please feel free to answer in a lot of different options. Um, Roxy, Sarah, and I are here to help help you decide if you're not exactly sure what, what direction you want to go, visit with us. We can help. Um, there's a lot of, lot of information out there that we can point you to or help you decide if you're interested in a specific degree or not quite sure how you want to use your transfer credits. All right, thank you for answering all of those. I am now going to turn it over to Sarah. So Sarah, if you'd like to talk about our transfer admissions, and again, please, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A box. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Jennifer said, my name is Sarah Kells. I'm one of the admissions representatives. Uh, I work with, uh, we all actually work with a lot of the undergraduate <laughs> programs. And I'm just going to kind of go over the application process, uh, transfer credits, uh, all our different transfer tools, and just some other helpful things that as transfer students, we feel that you need to know. So here you can see the steps for the transfer admissions process. I'm going to go through uh, these just a little, a little more detail over the next few slides, but just kind of an overview. The first step is to find your major. Uh, Jennifer just uh, mentioned all of the awesome degrees that we have online once you find your major or if you you know want to be open option uh your first step would be to apply for admission this includes completing the admission application paying the application fee uh, and having transcripts and documents sent to us for evaluation this way you can see how your previous classes transfer uh, also, definitely look at those scholarship and financial aid opportunities to see what's available. And then ultimately, enrolling in classes at K-State with uh, the help of your academic advisor would be your final step. So we just talked about the different options for online degrees. So just make sure to inquire about the degree that you're interested in. Uh, this is where Jennifer, Roxy, and I can help. If you have questions about the degree, admission requirements, really any questions in general, uh, we are here to help. Uh, definitely, we would love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We'll provide our, our contact information at the end of this presentation uh, so we can kind of talk with you again one-on-one -on -one, um, specifically. Another thing to consider is what semester do you want to start? Uh, our next start date is our spring semester, but we have uh, we also have start dates for the summer and fall semesters. And it's never too early to start planning what start date works best for you because there are different deadlines for admissions and scholarship applications. And we always say the earlier, the better. Uh, this way you're not rushing or forgetting anything for uh, the admissions process. So for applying, uh, your first step is to submit an application. And this is where we are going to ask you quite a few questions, but uh, there are a couple things I really want to point out. That way there's no hiccups in the application process. So uh, we do ask that you disclose all of your previous institutions that you have earned credits from. 
this way we can make sure our main admissions office is looking out for each of those transcripts from these schools as they come in. You will need to request transcripts from each of your schools, even if they are mentioned on your latest college uh, transcript. We do need transcripts from the, the institution that you earned those credits from. Also, uh, if you have any previous names uh, for that same reason, please definitely let us know. There is a place on the application for you to provide us with that information. Uh, an example is maiden name. That's probably the most common. Uh, so definitely make sure that you fill that out. So that way, if transcripts come under your previous name, we can match them with your application. There is an application fee. For domestic students uh, here in the U.S., it's $40, and for international students, it is an $80 fee. We do have some exceptions for uh, waiving this fee. If you were previously enrolled and completed classes with K-State, or you applied and paid the fee within the last year or the last three semesters, you will not have to pay that application fee again. And we are happy to look up any of that information and work with you one-on-one. -on -one. The last thing you need to do is to complete your application uh, is to request official transcripts, um, like I said, from each of your previous institutions. And you will need, they need do need to be official transcripts. So they must come directly from your previous institution. You cannot give us any personal or student issued copies. Uh, those are not considered official. If you're a military student, we work a lot with military students. So if you have any military credit uh, on transcripts, um, a JST, definitely have those sent to us. If you've taken any CLEP, AP classes, uh, any other exams, you would definitely want to have those sent to us so we can apply those as well. For our international students, we do accept international credits. We just need to make sure that you have those transcripts translated into English, but make sure to have, uh, make sure to also, uh, uh, like I said, transfer them into English, but also we do accept unofficial transcripts as well, just because we know that they can be a little difficult to find official ones. And sometimes they also take longer. Uh, and also, uh, these trans these documents can be mailed or faxed, but definitely email is going to be quicker. So when it comes to these transfer credits, uh, there are a few different requirements that we look for. Uh, they do need to come from a regionally accredited institution. So right now there are six regionally accrediting bodies and their job is to really set standards, um, guidelines for institutions of higher education to really follow. And this just makes sure that the quality of the education uh, is just equal, uh, adequate across the board. Regional and national accreditations are not the same. So be wary of that if you're looking at taking courses elsewhere uh, before transferring. Nationally accredited schools are usually going to be trade schools or for-profit schools. Um, an example would be um, some mostly uh, uh, most of the culinary schools. We do ask that you earn a C or higher on your transfer coursework. There are some classes with a D that might be accepted, but it really depends on the class and the degree that you're pursuing. Your GPA from other schools does not transfer, but we do need that and it is necessary for the admissions decision and also scholarships you're applying for. Once you get into K-State uh, and start completing classes, scholarship decisions and anything else will go off of your K-State GPA moving forward. Uh, some more about GPAs. For admission to K-State, you do need to have at least a 2.0 GPA or higher, uh, but some degrees do require a higher GPA. Uh, for example, the College of Business, they do require a 2.5 GPA. Be sure to just connect with one of us and we can talk with you more about that if um, you don't meet that uh, GPA requirement. 
Uh, there's also some degrees that require specific courses or prerequisites. Uh, food science and industry is a good example. They do require that a, a lot of uh, science classes be completed first. Uh, again, this is something that we can talk to you more uh, before you start applying. That way there's no surprises. So uh, we do have a great number of tools to help you with transferring. Uh, the first one that we're gonna talk about is our transfer equivalency tool. This is where you can search course by course. Uh, when using this tool, you will select uh, the school that you're transferring from or plan uh, to transfer credits from. And then you can select certain classes that have uh, articulated in the system. And uh, then it will tell you how they will transfer. And this is just kind of a screenshot of that page there. So that's uh, when you go to that site, this is the button that you would choose. All right, so uh, here's an example of when they, a student that has put in that they've taken classes at Barton County, they're planning to transfer there from Kansas to Kansas State. Uh, a couple things to really note, if you look at that first line, you'll see that the Kansas State University class on the right hand side has an asterisk by it. This does not mean that this class does not transfer. It just means that it will transfer, but it needs to be evaluated. Uh, and just to see how it fits into your specific degree plan, it may uh, count towards many different K-State classes. But if you look at the second line, the accounting 1640 from Barton, you'll see that the result for the K-State equivalent doesn't have any asterisks by it. That means that it is a specific K-State equivalent. So that class from Barton is going to come into K-State and show as accounting 231. So when using the transfer equivalency tool, you may not be able to find your school or maybe you can't find a certain class. And this just doesn't, it just doesn't mean that it won't transfer. It just might mean that we haven't had another student that has tried to transfer it before. So it isn't in our database. And if that does occur on that same website, you can see there, there's a button to request a course evaluation. And when you select that, there's going to be some more information there that you will need to provide for us. We will need a course syllabus along with uh, a list of the information that you see here. Usually all of these items are going to be listed in that syllabus. You will not need uh, to have the name. Uh, you will need to have the name of the institution, uh, the course name, the professor name, course topics, uh, grade information, textbook, um, and it also cannot be just a description of the class. You may um, also be saying to yourself, well, I did not keep that syllabus. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Uh, you can obtain that from the school's registrar's office or the department. It shouldn't be too difficult to obtain. Um, just make sure that it is from also uh, not only the professor, but also the semester that you took that class. So if you have any AP credit uh, and you're wondering how that's going to transfer to K-State, we do have another tool that is similar to the transfer equivalency tool. Uh, you'll see that here in a second. And as I mentioned earlier, with international transcripts, they do need to be translated to English and they can be unofficial. I just wanted to reiterate that, um, but let's take a sneak peek at the AP transfer tool. You can look at the type of test, uh, what your score was, what class it will count towards, and how many credit hours that class is worth. Uh, this will be a good resource for those that have completed any CLEP or AP tests. Um, and uh, I believe we're going to put that uh, link in the chat as well. 
So now we'll talk about our transfer pathways. Uh, this is on the same website as our transfer equivalency tool, but the other button, uh, the transfer pathways tool is really going to be the search by curriculum uh, there on the right hand side. And you can really utilize this tool to view a streamlined curriculum guide uh, that align the course requirements for a K-State online bachelor degree with the equivalent courses that can be transferred from another institution. This uh, is mostly available for Kansas Community College and Technical College, but I have seen a couple surprises with uh, maybe some of our neighboring states, Missouri, Nebraska. Um, so definitely take a look at that and see um, some of those. Oh. So here's an example uh, we've selected that we are transferring to uh, from Johnson County Community College. We selected uh, that as our school and uh, not sure what bachelor degree, probably business based on the math classes I see. Uh, but as you can see, this really gives you a great guide of classes that you can take at a specific school before transferring to K-State. And now I'm going to turn it over to Roxy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate it. So hi, everyone. My name is Roxy or Roxanne, as my colleagues have mentioned. Uh, I'm super excited to be talking with you all about some of our transfer resources. So Sarah has already talked about some great resources that we have. I'm going to just talk about a couple additional ones that I like highlighting. Um, the first one is Direct Link. So uh, this is a resource for any students who are attending community colleges in the state of Kansas. So if you're attending a community college in the state of Kansas, this is a great resource for you. Um, so this resource really helps people who are attending community colleges get connected with Kansas State and kind of prep about the transfer process. So um, this is something that you are able to utilize while you're a current community college student, and it really helps individualize your plan by pairing you with the K-State advisor. So you and your advisor at your community college then work with the K-State advisor through the Direct Link program. Your two advisors work together. They talk about, hey, you want to go into this program. You are interested in these classes. Let's see if you can start taking some of these things at your community college to then help transfer into K-State. It's less classes you have to take when you're at K-State. Um, so like I said, your advisors work together. They help you enroll in classes. They kind of help demystify the transfer process. I know it can be kind of scary for some people, um, but it's not. And I promise it's not. But also this resource just helps demystify, you know, what classes should I be taking to transfer to K-State? Or how do I prepare to transfer? Or, you know, what, what resources do I need in order to be a K-State student? This helps kind of through that whole process by pairing you and your advisor at your community college with a K-State advisor in your program of interest. So DirectLink also helps kind of clarify like, all right, this is, you know, the time it's going to take to get your degree completed. So it helps, you know, identify that, but also it helps reduce the time it's going to take because it's encouraging you to take classes at your community college that will then transfer into your next degree. Um, some great things about the program I like highlighting, first thing being that if you're involved in the direct link program, your application fee waiver, um, you're, you're given an application fee waiver upon completion. So if you're like, I might want to attend K-State, I'm thinking about it. Um, you know, one incentive for being in this program is that you get your application fee waived when you apply. And then that second kind of thing I like highlighting is you get a direct connection with the K-State advisor. So if you are the kind of person where you're like, well, I want to like get to know some people in advance, or I'm really passionate about this program. I want to identify, you know, some people who will be resources for me in the future. This is a great way to get involved and also get to meet some K-State people who are going to be working in your program before you're even a student with us formally. And I'll go to the next slide, please. Fabulous. Uh, so some things I just want to talk about with the direct link process and how it actually works. So um, when you're wanting to kind of explore the direct link or you're like, okay, I have more questions, I want to inquire about it, um, you can submit your inquiries via an online application. So that link will be sent in the chat. Um, and so when you're, you know, you request, you're like, hey, I'm kind of wanting to know more about this. I want to know what this is about. Can you give me more resources? Sometime after you submit that resource, you're then connected by our coordinator for transfer transition programs. So they will reach out and say, hey, we saw you're interested in direct link. Here's how this process is. You know, can we help answer any questions for you? Provide extra resources. Um, should you say, okay, that sounds great. I want to get involved with the program. Um, you send a welcome message or you get sent a welcome message and a, kind of a student agreement. So this is something that you and your academic advisor at your community college will sign and say, okay, we want to be a part of the program. You know, let's get formally started. 
So then once you know that's submitted, we've got your agreement, then the advisor connection is made between K-State and again, your community college. So you are connect, you're you connected with an advisor, you have someone here saying, hey, I'm happy to see that you're in direct link. I'm working with K-State. Let's talk about you know, your transition process. And then how this works once you're kind of in the program for direct link, you'll be getting semester updates. So your advisor will reach out and say, hey, you know, I am checking in, like here are some classes that you could take this semester that would help transfer into the program. Or, you know, what classes are you thinking about? Can I help you pick some stuff? Um, you know, what areas are you missing, you know, that you're wanting to transfer into? What classes can you start taking now in order to prepare and kind of maximize that transferability into K-State? And then just as a note, so that program is also open now to all majors and all, all campuses. So if you're saying, oh, well, I don't know if that will fit for me, or, you know, I'm curious, I'm, you know, going to be attending this program, does this have a transfer option? Um, Direct link is now open to everybody. And then another resource I like talking about is reverse transferring. So this is for people who, you know, are transferring to K-State without, you know, finishing their associate's degree. So some people say, you know, I really want to dive in, I want to go now, or um, I, you know, I don't really want to finish my associate's degree, I'd rather just dive in and go for the bachelor's degree. But um, how we kind of think about it on the online team is you've done all this work, you've kind of put so much time and energy into your curriculum. If you want to finish that associate's degree as well, we can help with that. So um, a resource that, uh, you know, reverse transferring is really helpful with is that if you're wanting to finish your associate's degree while taking classes at K-State, this is what that resource is. So what happens is it's an opt-in program. So as soon as you start as a K-State student, you'll be getting some emails saying, hey, are you interested in this? Is this something you want to kind of explore further? And what you can do is you can be taking K-State classes that then transfer into your, you know, K-State credits, obviously, but then also can be used towards your associate's degree to help complete your associates. So if you're transferring with us, you're starting in the spring or the summer, perhaps, and you're like, oh, I was a couple credits shy, but I don't need the associate's degree. This is a technical option that you can explore if you're like, oh, I, I was so close, I want to finish it, but I want to be working on my K-State curriculum. So you don't have to kind of split time and pick one or the other. You can use both. So it's a really helpful resource. It's great. If you uh, want to explore it further, my, my biggest kind of recommendation is to talk to your academic advisor or contact one of us. Um, and like I said, you can opt into this at any point in your K-State career. So if you're like, I want to take a semester, I want to go slowly with it, I want to see if I want to take classes or a reverse transfer, you've got time to consider that as well. Scholarships, financial aid, things that are on everybody's mind. Um, so these are just kind of some uh, deadlines we want to make sure that you were all aware of. So there's two primary scholarship avenues that um, we have as you know, K-State students that we offer to y'all. So the first one is our, you know, student scholarship network. That's a broader, all K-State students have access to it. So we like making sure students are aware of that. Also, we have specific scholarships for online students that are just for K-State online students. So these are offered three times a year. So they're offered in the fall, spring, and summer. Um, and the deadlines are listed in front of you. So if you're interested in exploring scholarships or have questions, you're welcome to reach out to us. We can share uh, the link for that scholarship uh, portal so you can learn a little bit more about that. Um, I also want to make sure that you're aware that the upcoming deadline for spring scholarships, so if you're like, I want to apply, I know I'm going to, I want to be a K-State student in the spring, you've got a couple weeks left for your spring scholarship deadline. So just be aware of that November 1st deadline for the spring, April 1st for the summer, and June 1st for fall scholarships. And we are a pretty big stickler about deadlines because you know, we want to make sure that we're giving out these resources to students in a timely manner. So if you're like, I want to think about spring scholarships, you've got a couple days left still to apply for those spring scholarships, reach out to us and let us know. Wonderful. So we've been talking a lot about all these resources, but like, what happens when you're admitted? What are the next steps? Um, and so if you apply, should you be admitted, you'll receive an admissions decision in your email. So it'll say, you know, hey, we've got some news for you, you open it, it's like, hey, congrats, you're a K-State student. So um, what happens there is kind of, you'll be given some instructions on next steps, but we've also listed them on the slide here for you. So ab about like one to three days after you get an admissions decision, you'll have an email saying, hey, here's next steps. And one of those things being how to set up your K-State EID and email. Your EID is kind of like your account that you can access all K-State systems. It is very important. You will need it for pretty much everything at K-State. So uh, if you're admitted and you haven't signed up for your EID yet or created it, please do so. I promise it is going to help you so much during your time as a student. Um, that's also how you'll create your, your email and kind of all of your K-State credentials about emails, please, please check your K-State emails. The one kind of resonant thing of advice all of my colleagues will tell you is your K-State email is so important for staying connected to campus. So you'll be getting emails about 
you know, course enrollment, deadlines for scholarships, connections from your advisors and faculty members. So uh, if you're the type of person that you're like, I don't really check email or like, I'll do that once every two or three weeks, I would highly encourage you to start like, you know, getting excited about checking emails just because there's going to be so much great resources coming to you on kind of a daily basis. So once you get your, you know, admissions decision, you've created your EID, you'll also need to create or uh, complete an online student orientation. So this will be something that helps orient you to life as an online student. So it shows you the resources that you have available. It kind of helps you navigate how to, you know, do online courses, how to find your information, how to contact your advisor. So it's a really important thing that we want students to be mindful of. So we ask that you do this before any sort of enrollment steps. You'll have to complete this orientation first. So depending on when you're admitted, um, they, you know, you may be added in the course within like a week if you're applying for the spring term, but if you're a summer or fall student, um, obviously we have more time until those semesters start, so you won't start being enrolled until, you know, later in the spring. If you are a student that you're waiting on an orientation, you're like, hey, I haven't gotten an email yet, or I don't really know about this, just contact your admission rep and we'd be happy to help. Once you've completed your orientation, your advisor then finds out and contacts you. They say, hey, congrats, you've completed the orientation. I'm gonna be your academic advisor. Let's kind of talk about enrollment plans. Uh, you'll also then in this time log into your cases, which is like your student portal. This is how you, you know, enroll in classes. This is how you look up your personal accounts. This is how you get financial aid. This is how you pay for tuition. So it's gonna be a great hub of all resources kind of in that all um, centralized spot in cases. You can also run a DARS report so you and your advisor can look at all of your previous credits and say, here's what transferred into the program, here's what you have left to complete. Um, so it's like a nice visual for you as you're planning uh, to enroll for the semesters. And then the fun part, enrolling in classes. So your advisor will help you with this process. You'll always enroll with your advisor every semester, but um, that's kind of the whole trajectory of what you're expecting when you get admitted as a K-State student. So here are just some tips that we like sharing. Uh, I'll go through these really quickly, but just some helpful things if you're thinking about transferring, you're about to be transferring with us in a future term. So um, if you haven't applied yet, my, be my best kind of recommendation for you is to start early. So if you're the kind of person you're like, I'll wait till like 11.59 the night the assignment's due and like slide in at the last second, please do not do that. Um, you want to give yourself more time just because sometimes it takes a couple days for transcripts to be sent from your schools, or sometimes it takes a couple days for applications to process. So um, if you know that you want to apply for a future term, I suggest giving yourself as much time as possible. It will save you so much stress in the long run. Um, also, as Sarah mentioned earlier, you'll want to send all of your transcripts to us. So any CLEP, any military credits, JSTs, Anything that you have that is, you know, college credits or things that you're wanting to send in, we will need all of those. Um, one, it will help you just like have more transferable credits that we can review, but also it's, you know, something we want to be able to evaluate and make sure it's kind of a holistic package to your application. So make sure you include all of that on your application and submit those documents to us. Um, reviewing the transfer credit tools like Sarah shared, um, they're really fantastic resources and they're free for y'all to use, so I encourage you to do so. Um, be prepare prepared to provide syllabi, so if you're, you know, requesting a course evaluation or, you know, want to explore that process like Sarah had mentioned, you'll want to have those syllabi ready to go. Um, stay in contact with us. We love hearing about, you know, you know, your successes and the kind of your journey through K-State, but also if you're like, I have questions about this or I feel very lost, that is what Jennifer, Sarah, and I are here for. We are here to help you as you are navigating the you know, transfer student process. So feel free to keep in contact with us. Also keep in contact with your advisor. They are a secondary, fantastic resource for you. Set up your K-State profiles, create your EID, check your emails, um, both your personal and new uh, K-State email once you're kind of getting started, but also like once you have been admitted and are transitioning into starting with K-State, most of your emails are going to be going to your K-State email specifically. So make sure you're checking that as well. And then this is just kind of a slide about all of your different resources. So obviously the three of us on this call are all here to support you, but you've got a lot of other people in your corner supporting you as an online student as well. So on the recruitment side, we've got recruiters, we've got people in admissions, we've got our admissions and enrollment coaches. In admissions, we have our assistant director and director of admissions. We have our transcript evaluators. Uh, we have your academic advisor, so someone who is designated to help you throughout your time at K-State. You have a financial aid advisor. So uh, if you ever have financial aid questions, you're like, ah, I like, need to know about money, I need to know about scholarships, how do I pay for school, um, you have a, fa uh, a financial aid advisor who is designated to you specifically. And if you're like, I don't know how to contact that person, feel free to let us know. Um, we have a fantastic IT department, so they're here to help you uh, with any sort of like, 
I don't know what's going on with accessing my account, or I have this random IT question about how do I do this thing. Obviously, as online students, we rely on IT a lot, and they are wonderful resources. And then if any of you are military connected or have questions about using military benefits or kind of military tuition, you know, assistance in any way, um, we have a fantastic uh, military student services coordinator on our team that we can connect you with as well. So this is just some upcoming dates that we wanted to highlight. Some of them we've already talked about. Some of them hopefully sound familiar if you've been looking at applications with us. So just letting you know that the most upcoming thing is that November 1st deadline. If you are looking for spring scholarships, you're going to want this in by the end of the month. It is like two weeks away. So put it on your calendars if you're like, I want spring scholarships because um, it's, it's coming up really quickly. If you're applying for the spring semester, your deadline for applications is January 1st. Um, the spring semester will start on the 16th, and then we kind of have a couple months until the next deadlines. If you're looking for scholarships for the summer term, it's going to be April 1st of next year. Um, the deadline for summer applications is May 1st. Classes will start on the 20th. The deadline for fall scholarships is June 1st. Applications are due for that term August 1st, and then classes start August 19th. Okay, we've been saying a lot of things at you. You're probably like, okay, what are the next steps now? Like, what do I do from here? So if you're ready to apply, you're welcome to send, um, you know, us any questions you have, but you're also welcome to just access our portals. So um, you can reach out to us via online at ksu.edu. So if you have questions, you can email us from that link um, and that will come to us and we can help answer questions. If you're like, I'm ready to apply, you can go to apply.ksu.edu. That will pull up the application portal. Um, and if you're like, I'm ready to dive in, no questions, that's fine. If you're like, I've got a couple of questions, I want to talk to y'all, that's also fine. Um, like my colleagues had mentioned, so this recording is going to be available about seven to 10 business days. So we want to make sure it's like, you know, finalized, cut together, we cut out any like weird audio at the beginning, uh, but then we'll send you the link when this is all finished. So um, if you're like, hey, I'd love a recording of that, or you said something great, but once this call ended, I like thought about something completely different, I forgot it, you will have this as a recording. And then as a thank you for attending. So if you are on this call right now, we really appreciate it. I know coming for an evening session is not always the most fun thing. Um, so for anyone on this call right now, you'll be uh, eligible for an application fee waiver for the spring or summer 2024 term. Um, that's not uh, eligible for dietetic students, but for everybody else on the call, um, this is a resource we'd love to share with y'all. If you wanna you know, access that, please reach out to us. So again, email us at online at k-state.edu. Say, hey, I was on the webinar. I'd love to contact y'all, but also want that application fee waiver. So um, it doesn't just happen magically. You do need to let us know so we can add it to your account. Um, and be sure to reach out to us about that before you pay for the application. So um, be sure to be like, hey, I, I want to apply. Can you give me that fee waiver? Don't pay it and say, hey, can I get that refund back? Because those fees are non-refundable. Um, y'all, thank you so much for joining us. We've been talking a lot. I now want to switch this over and kind of give y'all space to talk and uh, ask us some questions. I know there have been some fantastic ones in the chat right now. Um, but if you have any additional questions for Jennifer, Sarah, and myself, anything about our programs or um, services, we're happy to assist. Thank you all so much. Yes, we do have a question in here, and maybe Roxy or Sarah, if you want to take it. How soon after applying do we typically hear if we get accepted? So we do like to say around four weeks. Uh, that is probably, I would say, I give us four weeks. Um, we have been seeing the turnaround a little faster, but it does depend on um, when you submit your application. Uh, we do have times of the year where everyone is getting everything at once. And so our admissions office is running a little slower. So definitely give us about four, uh, four weeks. Uh, also, um, we, your application won't start processing until we get everything for your application, your application fee, um, and all of your transcripts. Um, once we get the last of those, that's when that four weeks will begin. Good question. We have had some great questions. If you have anything else you want to type in there, if you want to raise your hand, we can let you talk as well. So, um, here was a question. Can you talk a little more about the animal science and industry program? Sarah, Roxy, one of you want to take that one? I can jump in if you want, Sarah. Go for right. it. <laughs> yeah, so our animal science industry program is really cool. There's five different program options. So um, if you're really interested in that program and are like, I want to explore the differences, we can share them. Um, we have things in product management. We have things in business. We have a communications. We have our science and pre-vet option and our animal products. Yes. Uh, I was like, I was like products and production management. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> um, but 
but so they're fantastic programs. Uh, I shared this as an answer earlier. So most of the curriculum is, is fully online. There may be one or two classes, depending on which of those tracks you select, um, that aren't offered online through us, but every academic advisor like helps you find an online option for that class if you're missing it. So for example, um, Sarah had shared microbiology is not offered online, unfortunately. And every student has to take microbiology in certain programs. And so we just say, hey, we've got a great partnership with this school. We will help you enroll. So the faculty are like, very well versed in helping you with that. You don't have to physically go to campus to take that class. Technically, the degree is fully online. Just one or two of those classes may not be things that we offer ourselves. Um, but they are all great programs. And if you have further questions about that, Sarah, I would love to talk to you about it more in depth. Yeah, and I would say that's probably one of our top three most popular bachelor programs, just because we do offer the pre-vet curriculum. Uh, one, uh, and like Roxy said, are the advisors for that program are very well versed in this uh this program and also for veterinary schools for your grad for your post bachelor so um having an idea maybe of what veterinary schools you want to go to is really helpful uh so that way they can make sure that you complete the prerequisites that that specific vet school requires uh there's a lot that is very similar between schools but sometimes you find a weird one so <laughs> Another question come in, is there an out-of-state tuition fee if you reside outside of the state of Kansas? And the answer to that is no. The beautiful thing about online education is that there is no in-state difference in tuition between in-state or out-of-state. So everybody play, pays the same amount for tuition. Um, depending on the college that you're in, you may have a few fees tacked on top of that tuition. It just varies by college. We've got like the College of Agriculture or the College of Health and Human Sciences so or the College of Business. They may have different fees tacked on top of that, um, but everybody pays the same tuition, whether you're in-state or out-of-state. So that's what makes online learning at K-State a really valuable um, commodity. Another one, the Bachelor of Science in Food, food Science and Industry. How long does it last? Sarah, would you like to take that one? Yeah. Um, and also feel free to clarify in the Q&A um, and also Roxy add on. <laughs> um, so how long does it last? Um, so all bachelor degrees are 120 credit hours. Uh, we don't have an expiration date on really any transfer credits coming in, but there might be some classes that depending on what the department requires, they might want you to take an updated one. So if you took a class in 1980, they may want you a science class. They may want you to retake that science class. Um, it might be a little more up to date today. Um, it really just kind of depends. Um, so I hope that answered if not, um, uh, and also, um, you know, if uh, you're talking about maybe you know, how long does it take to complete? It really depends on what classes you've taken and how they apply to that food science degree. And and again, where you took those, you wanna make sure that you took them at a regionally accredited school. Um, and that's something that we can discuss with you individually. I'll jump in. I saw, um, so someone was saying that they're interested in the Bachelor of Elementary Education. Um, they were wondering if they could complete the degree in two years instead of four. A general rule of thumb, so our programs are all 120 credit hours to complete. So um, there's kind of a pretty standard, like if it's you have no transfer credits, it's about four years to complete full time. Obviously, the amount of time it takes to complete a degree will depend on how many transfer credits you're bringing in. So um, if you're bringing in 60 credits and you're like, okay, I've got pretty much half of my degree done, and your department says, okay, we can accept those 60. So yes, you can finish a degree in about two years full time, but um, that's going to vary by a couple different factors. So please reach out to us if you're like, hey, here's my specific situation. I want to know um, more information about the elementary education program is unique because you take uh, in person, um, you know, you do an in person kind of experience, field experience um, for two years because you're teaching in classrooms. And so um, that program can look a little bit different because you have to take those two years, um, you know, in person, you're doing those in-person classes, but there may be things you have to take 
prior to that teaching block. So um, while in theory it can be completed in two years, that's a pretty unique program that we'll wanna talk about, you know, what your transfer credits are, what you've completed degrees in previously. Um, if you're saying, okay, I have no credits and I wanna do it in two years, it's not gonna be possible, but I mean, we're happy to talk about individual situations with students. Uh, Sarah, I think you've got the next one. Yes, um, and I was going to add also, we did also have an elementary education webinar earlier this week, uh, and that uh, we can definitely, if you email us, we can send you the recording to that one. It might clarify a couple different options, and and Dr. Levine uh, and uh, Marcus Kidd and uh, Sarah, I can't remember her last name, <laughs> they did a great job, and we'd be happy to... <laughs> Um, if I have an associate's degree, do I need to include all the courses I took before obtaining my associates? Yes. Uh, anywhere that you have taken college credits, you will need to have a transcript sent to us. Uh, so uh, even if it's um, maybe some college classes that you took in high school, uh, maybe you had dual credit, definitely have that sent to us. We need, have to have a complete history of your uh, of your educational educational history um and again we can talk one-on-one -on -one with you about um getting those if you are having any problems as well i can take this one what is the acceptance rate for applying to kansas state university it will maybe depend on what program you're headed into, but by and large, in general, to get accepted to K-State for most programs, you need to have a 2.0 GPA on all of your transfer credit um, taken after high school. So if, um, if you meet that requirement, you will more than likely be admitted into K-State. Now, there are some disclaimers, like if you've ever had a felony, they may look at that a little bit closer. Um, if you've had had anything that was kind of questionable um, in regards to your yeah, personal history like that, they may um, need appeal statements or whatnot. But for the most part, if you have a 2.0, you get admitted into K-State. Now, there are some programs, as Sarah had mentioned earlier, that may require a 2.5 GPA or even a 3.0 GPA. So you'll really want to pay attention to those programs. Um, but um, getting admitted into K-State as a transfer student is uh, quite quite possible if you have a 2.0 GPA. Uh, do you have to transfer from another school or can you just apply? Uh, is there a chance that you may not get accepted in? Jennifer kind of talked a little bit more about that, that there are some situations where you not not be. Uh, if As long as you meet those admission requirements, you should not have any problems uh, and you get everything in on time. Uh, I also want to add that, <laughs> um, <laughs> that you shouldn't have any problems being admitted. But if you have any concerns, again, we'll work one-on-one -on -one with you. Uh, we have worked with some students that have been denied. Maybe they don't have that 2.0 GPA. And that's when um, I know Jennifer works with uh, our denied students, but um, if you want to work with us before you submit an application, we're happy to do that as well. Great question. Also, yeah, these have been fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll jump on this next one. So someone was asking about one of our certificates specifically. So um, how much time does it take to complete the food safety and quality certificate? So um, every certificate is going to range. I always tell students, like, it, it kind of depends on, like, your timeline. Some students take one class a semester and, you know, they're trying to just go things really slowly. They're like, I'm trying to go as quickly as possible. I usually tell students, like, give yourself about a year, year and a half to complete um, certificates because that just depends on when classes are offered. So some classes are only offered in the fall. Some are only offered in the spring. So depending on when you apply, you may be able to complete it within a full year or you need to add like another semester per se. But usually our, our certificates can be completed in about a year and a half, but also there's no rush on it. So if you're like, I want to take one class at a time, like there's no, we don't say like, okay, you have to go take more classes or you have to go faster. So it's really kind of up to your um, timeline and comforts. And then uh, with that specific uh, certificate, yes, all the classes then apply into the food science uh, and industry bachelor's degree. So if you're like, hey, I want to, you know, take the certificate and kind of explore first and see if I want to go further. Um, if you take that certificate and you really like it, you then can apply for the bachelor's program and all those credits would apply. Uh, what kind of, oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Sarah. 
Um, and actually, um, I do want to mention one thing about the certificates. Uh, we do have a number of certificates that fit into many of the bachelor degrees, but if you are just pursuing a undergraduate certificate, uh, not if you apply to just a certificate and you aren't declaring that you're attending or that you're pursuing a bachelor's, you are not eligible for financial aid or scholarships. Uh, you also um, are not allowed any transfer credits. All courses in that undergraduate certificate have to be completed at K-State. Um, but if you uh, but if you do the certificate and later on want to complete the bachelor's, those classes that you took for that certificate can go into the food science. Um, but definitely I wanted to mention that financial aid and scholarship. Um, it is only available to degree seeking, um, which brings me into this question. Um, what kind of scholarships are offered for those who really need help financially? Uh, when you apply for admission, you are automatically considered for general university scholarships. Uh, we do have our online our scholarships for online students that uh, Roxy had mentioned and went over the deadlines for those. Um, we also, uh, you know, we have that application fee waiver. So for attending tonight, you won't have to worry about paying that. Um, uh, and we can also, uh, depending on the degree that you're searching for, your advisor might know of some third parties that offer scholarships as well. Um, so those would be some of the options that we can discuss with you as well. Um, I can jump in for this one, Sarah, or you. It's up to you. Uh, I'm reading it. So you, if you've read it, go for it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. So, oh my gosh, no worries. I didn't want to like cut you off. No. Uh, so uh, really the, the question was just making sure like how much time does it take to request transcripts for the institutions and, you know, how much of like buffer should we give? Like I said, apply as early as possible. So if you're, you know, if you know that you want to apply for the spring there's no reason to wait for applying. You can just start if you know you want to apply for the summer or fall for next year. We have all of those application terms open right now. Um, I would say it really does vary by school and by how they send your transcripts. So some schools do electronic transcript sending, which means we can get it within like a day or two. Some schools do physical mail still, and that can be seven to 10 business days minus any other weird blips that our, you know, postal service works with. So I always tell students like it, it can range drastically. So if you're knowing that you want to apply, give yourself as much time as possible for applications. So apply early, start requesting your transcripts. There's no reason that like you should wait till the last minute because you can apply for all of our terms for next year already like tonight if you wanted to. Um, so if you are like, if you apply and then there is an issue with your transcript, we haven't received it, that gives us time to then talk with you and kind of figure out what happened. So like I, I'll always keep saying, give yourself as much time as possible. You will be doing yourself a favor. And then I'll jump around to the next one. So uh, someone was asking when you successfully complete a bachelor's degree, are you able to you know, walk for graduation? And the answer is yes. So um, when you complete your degree, you are able to go and attend an in-person graduation. That's kind of a like up to you decision. So some students are not able to go for graduation. We'll still have some variant of an online graduation. But if you're like, I want to go in person and walk and have that experience, you're able to go and um, attend graduation as well. Uh, just clarifying if uh, they have their associates do their courses transfer. Uh, it depends on what you've taken and how that apply and where you've taken it and how it applies to the degree program. Um, and that's something that we would just need to work with you individually. Um, oh, uh, if I apply for the bachelor program of food science, could uh, they get the undergraduate certificate in food safety while pursuing the bachelor's? Um, I believe so. I don't see any problems there. Um, and that's something that uh, you can definitely discuss more with your advisor if that's something you're interested in. Um, once, once you're admitted, you'll be able to be talking with a food science advisor that will go over your transfer credits, uh, help you run that DARS report Roxy mentioned, um, and talk about all these different options. Great questions tonight. 
Yeah, for sure. I know we're getting close to time and I want to be respectful of everyone's you know, time this evening. Um, so is there any last minute questions that people have? You're welcome to ask them now. Like we've kind of shared all evening, we will be available via email. You're welcome to call our office. Uh, I promise everyone on this call is very friendly. So if you're like, I have further questions and I want to ask them one-on-one, -on -one, we'll be happy to answer them. So um, Jennifer shared our, our you know, phone contact, email is usually the best thing for all of us, but if you're welcome to like reach out whatever avenue works best. So you can email us, you can call us, whatever questions you have, please feel free to reach out. But any last second questions before we all head out for the evening? Well, the last thing I'll say at least is thank you so much everyone for joining. So we really appreciate it. Thank you for the awesome questions and your excitement. Um, we really hope to see your applications in the future. I did see one, yeah, perfect, so I can answer this. Uh, so is there a way to set up a personalized transfer meeting or appointment with one of you? Yes, email us. Um, so email us, you'll be connected with your um, your admission rep, that's one of the three of us and say, you know, then we can send our you know phone link or our appointment links and we'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one with you. So yes, that is an option. Um, yes, we love talking to y'all. Yeah, and uh, it, it just uh, who you get connected with just kind of depends on what your degree is and everything. Um, so, uh, but yeah, email us and we'd be happy to talk with you. All right. Well, thank you again, everyone. Thanks uh, for the great questions. And um, again, let us know if you're interested in taking advantage of that application fee waiver and have a great night. Yes, bye everyone.